asked Rob Parker how annoying Laker fans are. Check out his website, MOBBro.com. Founder and editor covers black and brown players from around the major leagues, chronically the past of both past and present black and brown players, highlighting their achievements in the game right now from a historical standpoint. Inside the Parker Podcast every single Thursday, the MLB Bros Show every Saturday and Sunday. And Rob, good morning to you. Welcome back to the Roast, man. Long time no talk. And you got something else cooking in Detroit I want you to explain to the people that I think it's groundbreaking and really special for that city. And you're being, you being a pioneer behind it. I just saw it on Facebook not too long ago. I believe it's going to be an all-African-American station in Detroit, if I'm not mistaken. That is it. It's called. And, good, and thanks for having me, guys. Anytime. Always a pleasure. No doubt. But yeah, man, we're launching uh, a uh, all black sports talk radio station in Detroit called Sports Rap Radio. We're supposed to launch May sixteenth, right. which I'm really excited about. Um, and uh, B.J. Armstrong, the former Chicago yeah. Bulls, mm-hmm. uh, Maurice Ways, who's a former Michigan uh, football player, and Dave Kenny, who's a music guy. Uh, the four of us have started this station. And um, as you know, in this business, and I, I first got my first sports talk radio job 30 years ago in 1994 in Detroit. I was the first person ever hired on the fan in Detroit. And um, the opportunity for um, African-Americans on the air just aren't good. I mean, it's just a slim pickings, no matter what city. And four years ago in Detroit, they had zero African-American host. Can you imagine that wow. in a city that's well, 83% black? They had wow. none. You know, Rob, I'm glad you said that because I know Bonte won't say it, but I will say it on his behalf. He's one of the only guys who drives a morning show or any show who didn't play at the uh, you know professional level, right. who's a black man in America talking about sports. So, like, yeah, there are few and far between, and I'm very proud of him and all the things that he's accomplished, and it's ridiculous that there isn't more representation. I completely agree with you. It, it is, and so that that was really what motivated me. So I wrote a column at that time four years ago for to Deadspin, uh, for Deadspin and uh, they hired an African-American guy named Rico Beard uh, to do the afternoon show to co-host it, and that was, uh, so they still have the one guy, but that was four years ago. They hired him 10 days after my column was, uh, wow. was put up. Um, and, and, but still there's a, there's a, there's a missing, there's a void. And we are hoping that we start in Detroit and I'm really excited about it. But if we start in Detroit, we want to make it a network and, uh, you know, try to hit the top 10, 20, 25 black cities in the country and uh, make it a network, and who knows, maybe it catches on, the format, and, and before you know it, there's a hundred jobs around the country right. for African-American or brown people to talk sports on the radio, and that's our real hope, so uh, I'm, I'm thrilled about it. And basically what I'm, what I'm saying in my line, my, my money quote is basically that Detroit has been listening to American Bandstand for a long time, and we're finally going to give it Soul Train. Wow. So that's our goal. I love that. I love great that, job. Rob. That's a great job right there. And that's why I love the National Association of Black Journalists Convention, which you were inducted into the Hall of Fame for, because, Rob, I tell the story all the time. My first, I, I met with a, a white guy from the Dallas Morning News, and then I saw you. And the contrast and the conversations were completely different. The guy from the Dallas Morning News said, yes, yeah, son, you're going to have to pick a lane. You can't write and, and, and try to be in, in sports talk radio. And then I see Rob, like 20 minutes later, he's like, dude, do both. Why wouldn't you want to do both? And here I am doing television and radio. So, Rob, I thank you for that because it is possible to do both and do both lanes. And you have to in this business now. You have to. They're all intertwined, dude. And, and the more versatile you are, the more valuable you are to an organization. So, you know, when I was doing it, and I've been doing it for almost 40 years between, you know, writing a column and doing radio and and um, doing television and all those kind of things. So the more the better, yeah. and, uh, you know, I'm proud of your success. No, nah, I appreciate uh, that, Rob. No, nah, we were proud of you, too, and we obviously love talking baseball with you. We love talking basketball with you. We're going to touch all sports here in a second, but obviously the Shohei Otani news <laughs> has been taking Major League Baseball by storm. so I'll just ask you, Rob, what was your initial reaction to the Shohei Otani news? Could, couldn't have been worse for baseball. Like, like they, they were in South Korea, it's the first game of the year, and the next day, Instead of talking about Shohei's Dodger debut to come back win for the Dodgers right over the Padres, it's this bombshell. And you're not talking about 
like uh, $10,000 change in hands. You're talking about $4.5 million. And the biggest star in the game, his name is attached to this whole thing. And then you got flip-flopping stories and what's going on. And it, there'll be an investigation. This is this is bad. Uh, my, my first reaction is, how in the world does an interpreter who makes between what do you say three hundred and five hundred thousand, right? Being his interpreter, how does that guy get a credit line of four point five million with a bookie? Like I, I somebody would have to explain that to no. me. That doesn't make sense. Well, and 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 Rob, like it's just <laughs> there's just so many layers to this one. Um, but also, like the bigger takeaway to me is. Man, betting is everywhere. I don't bet, right? I never had enough money to bet. I always feel like, man, I work really hard for my money, and I really don't want to see it go out the door. And I never met anybody who's had a successful family and homes and lives who, right. who was an active better. It's just in my life, you know what I mean? And so, no, but you're probably right. And I, I tell people all the time, go look at Las Vegas. Go <laughs> look around. You don't think they're making those, they're building those buildings because they're losing money, do you? You don't no. think so. <laughs> No. So I guess I guess where I'm going is when I see all of the media uh, attaching themselves to BetMGM, DraftKings, like we're all just taking money, all of us. And if it was legal in California, I'm sure this station would take money and we would be the benefactors of that. But this is the slippery slope that you go up against. Uh, and I just I, I feel like Pandora's box has been open and the regulation portion of it has to be mandatory if you want everything on the up and up and you want to have integrity in these games aren't the WWE and they're scripted. You're 100 percent right. And I, I said it last night on, on the Odd Couple that sports, the league should probably not probably should get out of gambling as as hard as it would be. For the money aspect, and here's the bigger part, and J.B. Bickerstaff, I don't know that you guys talk about or hear his quote, but fans have become more vile and angry, yeah. not because their team lost, but because they didn't cover, the team didn't cover the spread, yep. or the coach took out the best players, and then the other team, you know, who was down by 20, cut it to eight, and then you lose money. And, and they're, they're like... These are what fans are looking at now. And, and people, let's go back to the NFL. The NFL was doing just fine, but it wasn't the, the juggernaut that it is now. And when that turn was when fantasy football mm. became prevalent in football. Remember, ABC took Monday Night Football off. Monday Night Raw used to beat the NFL on Monday wow. night. People don't remember that. Wow. And when fantasy football, go, go look at the yep. history of why it yep. came off of network television. It wasn't doing well. And I remember the fantasy football uh, infusion changed it because people now, and this is where the gambling comes in, they're not following their local team. They could care less. They don't want to go to the game because they want to watch their fantasy they're, 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 they're all the players around the league, they got a player from everywhere. So that's what's more important to them than, than going to the game and watching your team and, and hoping your team wins. It's a totally different animal. Than, and, and that's what made the NFL bigger. Yeah, Tyrese Halliburton was just discussing this, saying we feel like a prop because everybody's making these prop bets, and when you don't come up with the rebound, you're like, I had the points, rebounds, and assists, prop bet. What are you doing? Shoot the ball or grab that rebound. You're so spot on with that, with the fantasy football explosion, because that's how they got a lot of women involved in the NFL as well, yeah. because women in the family and friends league, not to say that women wasn't involved in the NFL, but I started meeting a lot of women who were casual fans who were like, Oh, I don't really watch football, but I had that guy on my fantasy football team. My wife. Yeah, see, there you She's go. She's in the so family league they, talking they smack. They, they, right, they, they don't watch it. They're like, oh, but he's on my team. Yeah, right. exactly. Mm -hmm. We're rooting for him to catch five passes or half 70 yards at a touchdown. You'll spot out with that as we're talking to Rob Parker. Here he does all things. Check out his website, MLBBro.com. It's coming up with Sports Rap Radio in Detroit. That's going to get launched in all-black radio station. First all-black sports talk radio station in the country is going to launch in May in Detroit, Michigan, of course. All right, let's switch gears here and talk about our Giants out here in the Bay Area. They made some moves. It was a slow offseason. Next thing you know, they end up with Matt Chapman, Blake Snell. They have Jorge Solar, John Cooley. There's a lot of optimism about the Giants this time around, Rob. How much better do the Giants look on paper? And do you feel like all of a sudden they could compete for a playoff spot with this new look roster? Yeah, I like, I like well, Blake Snell to me, I mean, now you got Logan Webb and him at the top of your rotation, man. I, 
you go into a three game series, you're in a good spot right there. I, I love that. Uh, I, I know um, Blake Snell should have been signed a long time ago, and I know that they're looking for all kinds of um, contract specialties that a lot of teams didn't want to deal with, and the Giants accepted it because he basically right can can bolt after can can opt out yep. right. Yep, after, him and Chapman, after, yeah, opt outs yeah. after each year. Right, so so I mean the Giants are saying, okay, well, well, we'll we'll take it if if we win, maybe he'll want to stick around and 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 continue, and if not, that's fine. But we'll at least put a team on the field that can compete, and people want to see. We already know the fan base up there and how much people love the Giants. Um, so I'm I'm glad to see that that they didn't punt like some of these other teams. Like I don't know what the Red Sox are doing. Like there's their teams who have punted. But the Giants, I think getting Blake Snell and Chapman and, and the Soler and the moves that they've made have made that team better. And you know what? In baseball, we just saw it. The best team on paper doesn't always win. The Dodgers have won 100-plus games the last two years and got knocked out last year. Uh, the, the, the Dodgers didn't even lead. In any in any of the playoff games, when they got knocked out in the first round, they didn't they didn't leave once. I mean, which was incredible considering the year that they had. So that's that's great for the Giants. You know, I, it's I'm looking at your website right now, MLBBro.com, and you have an article about Mookie Betts. Now, my dad, he recently passed, thought that Mookie Betts was the closest player to Willie Mays that he's ever seen in terms of his ability to change a game from running the bases, the way he played the outfield. And I'm watching him, and to my lifetime, Craig Biggio going from catcher as an all-star to second base to going to gold glove to then going to center field because they signed Jeff Kent, moving to left field, back to second base. Like, he's one of the most versatile defensive players of all time. Are we watching Mookie Betts? be a better version of what Craig Biggio was. The guy hit 39 home runs and 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 batted 300, and now he's playing shortstop after being a gold glove outfielder. I feel like the, the game hasn't talked enough about how great this one player is. 100%. 100%. It's funny because I'm, I'm going to write a column to start the MLB bro coverage for baseball season, which is don't forget about Mookie Betts. I, I get the show, hey, and I'm not trying to discount him. And what he's able to do, and they signed Yamamoto, and they're all excited, who got shelled in his first start. But that's all good. But don't forget about Mookie Betts, and I'm with you. Nobody of that talent, to see a guy as a gold glove, an MVP, who played the outfield, who moves to second base, he could easily say, dude, I'm a, I'm a Hall of Fame potential outfielder, right? Right fielder. And why would I move? Why would I upset my apple cart? Why would I, you know, the responsibility of playing shortstop and making plays and turning double plays that need to be turned. You know, it's the difference between winning and losing. Right. If you don't turn that double play and give a team another out, uh, you know, it's huge. So, so I'm with you. He, he is one of the, the top three best baseball players right now in baseball, and we can't sing his praises enough. No, nah, no doubt. I'm with you there. Rob Parker here on the Morning Russ on 95.7 The Game. A couple quick ones for you before we get you out, and we do appreciate the time. Uh, before we get to the Warriors, just got to ask you, because yesterday I had a lot of things going on, but it was the first time in my life where I didn't watch a second <laughs> of March Madness on the first day. Like, I used to grow I used to love this stuff. I can't right. name five college players right now, and I'm actually more intrigued with the women's basketball tournament than I am the men's tournament. Does March Madness still do anything for you, Rob? Yeah, it's it's not good. I mean, it really has fallen off. It is amazing on how how little people are into it, and I know there's still a gambling aspect, and people right. gamble on it in that. But for me, last night doing our show, uh, you know, in the background, all we could see was uh, Kentucky. I think that's mm -hmm. the biggest. I think Kentucky losing to Oakland and, and everybody needs to say Oakland, what school is that? Because that's in Rochester, Michigan, yep. and that's Oakland County where I used to live and where my house still is in, in, in suburban Detroit. So most people don't even know what that's, what that school is. And I think it's cemented that John Calipari is the most overrated coach in college basketball history. 15 years there, the talent that's come through Kentucky one championship, and they've only won one tournament game in the last five years. Yep. He should be fired. 
uh, wow. at Kentucky. I don't know if they'll do it, you know, uh, but he really has failed them. I cannot get over how bad Kentucky is. And, uh, uh, I mean, and, and John Calipari in his career, great recruiter. He, I, I call him can't coach Cal. I mean, I think that's the right. <laughs> hey, Rob, I need, I, I need your, your opinion on the Warriors for this year, like right now, because yeah. you know, Warrior fans have been spoiled. We've been spoiled, and we, we're, we're accustomed to the year starting in the second round, and then we start getting super fired up, and this year they're in the box. They're in the play-in <laughs> game, all right? And, and they'll be lucky to make it because the Rockets are on their heels, too. Uh, what do you got on the Warriors, Steph Curry, and, and just where they're at as an organization? You smell that? That's the Warriors. I'm not buying them at all. <laughs> I'm not. I, I, I know everybody, all I would hear from people, don't count out the Warriors, don't count out the Lakers, because I get it. They have iconic players and guys who have won in the past, so people never want to shut the door on them. But my goodness, the West is loaded and a lot of good young teams and, and scenarios, and I get it. People are always... Well, if OKC has to play the Lakers or the Warriors, you know what I mean, with the young team, could they beat them? Sure, they could beat them. But, but I think it's on fumes in the last legs when you talk about the Warriors. And, and you've seen it. They'll win a game. They, you know, they had a nice little stretch going, and then there'll be a game that, that they need to win, and they don't win it. And, yeah. and I, that's, that's the thing, the inconsistency where you think, that they were rolling, right? And then they play a game that, that they should win or need to win, and they don't do it. All right, last one for you here, Rob. My guy Shasky over here wants to see LeBron come up north and play with Steph McCurry. Yep. I don't. I'm com- I'm an old-school type of guy. I don't think Magic Magic fans ever wanted to see Magic play with Bird. I don't think they want to see Jordan play with his top rivals, like Jordan going to team up with Joe Dumars and Isaiah Thomas. We don't want to see that stuff. Do you want to see... LeBron James and Stephen Curry team up on the Golden State Warriors next season because the rumor's hot right now. Come on, Rob, save us here. Tell me you don't want to see this. No way, no how do I want to see that. I'm with you. I, I don't want to see that. And I'll say this. I think it would be a mistake on Steph's part because, let's be honest, in the so-called LeBron era, Steph has as many championships as LeBron. Why would you do that? Uh, I just, I, I just don't, I don't understand what Steph would get out of it to have LeBron come. And I told you this before, when they were, when LeBron retires and 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 they build that statue out in front of the arena in Cleveland, in one hand he'll have a basketball, and in the other hand he'll have a suitcase. That's what his career is all about. <laughs> that is, I never heard that before. That's incredible. <laughs> incredible. That's incredible. <laughs> it's incredible. Rob Parker here on the Roast. We always love talking to you, man. We're going to do it throughout the baseball season. Covers black and brown players from around major leagues, chronically the path of both past and present black and brown pay- players, highlighting their achievements in the game right now and from a historical standpoint. I love it. Inside the Parker Podcast every single Thursday. Check it out. The MLB Bro Show every Saturday and Sunday. And, of course, he's launching an all-black sports radio station in Detroit in May. Rob, you're so good to us, man. Continued success for you. Congratulations on the Hall of Fame bid. Sorry you that Sam Lubman had to run into you at Oracle Park last season. You had to hear it's from him. Good. Yeah. You know I'll be there. You know I'll make my annual trip. I come every Every year to catch a Giants game. So I'll be there, guys. Nice. Thanks so much. Continue success. Absolutely, Thank you. Rob. Thanks for the time today. I love it. Rob Parker here so, on the board, Russell.